Hey, I'm Dukes on Twitch. If you want to support the channel and greensunsinit.com, you can find my Patreon, merch store, and single store where you can buy singles through TCG Player or Card Hoarder in the video description. If you want to get in contact, you can also find all that info in the description below for things like donation deck lists or just wanting to reach out. All right, let's get right into it. Hey team, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Back today with a pretty cool list from Ravenous Panda who recently submitted 100,000 channel points to get a deck on stream, which is very cool to see. And this is their take on Yorion Naya Lands. This is a pretty typical land style deck, but obviously you have a little bit, a little bit more room to play with, with the extra 20 cards. And we can kind of see that from uh, this kind of area. So the loams, the explorations, uh, Reclaimer does show up now and then in lands, obviously Crop Rotation does as well, but the Fables, the Minsk and Boos, uh, the Wandering Emperor, and then of course a bunch of really efficient removal in four Lightning Bolt, four Swords to Plowshares, two Prismatic Endings, and then a Prismatic Ending in the board. For ways to actually win the game, we obviously have Minsk and Boo, potentially Wandering Emperor, and Elvish Reclaimer. But I think most of the time, this deck is going to be winning through Thespian Stage with Dark Depths making it 2020, or through Urza's Saga tokens, uh, which generally over time can get pretty big, uh, especially with cards like Shadow Spear, and obviously a few uh, ways to create uh, or get uh, artifacts through either Urza Saga, or the creature attacking with Fable, of course. The treasure tokens are artifacts. Um... Otherwise, pretty normal deck. We have some one-offs like Caracas. We have Bajookabog for instant speed. Uh, Graveyard Hate, which is really cool. We have the Tabernacle at Pendral Vale. We have a Ghost Quarter along with uh, the Four Wastelands, which is really nice. Ghost Quarter can come up a lot of, a lot of times in some sort of niche uh, areas. You might have uh, Pissing Needle decks in Wasteland, things like Cloud Post, sometimes Eight Cast. Uh, obviously hitting Abundant Growthed Basics is pretty good, uh, and also generally just uh, a few decks that do run basics only run one or two, so while they may try to rely on those for uh, an early way to build out their mana base, Ghost Quarter can obviously have a pretty big impact there. Um, the one card I haven't seen too much of in Legacy in general is Triomes, and this list is running one. Um, it's pretty nice because it can be fetched, it is a mountain, a forest, and a plains, uh, and it can also be cycled, which means at instant speed, we do have a way of saving something like a life and a loam from a graveyard effect like Surgical Extraction or Endurance, which is nice. Uh, the other thing that I really like about this deck is the sideboard. Pretty clean. Four Blast Effects, two Force of Vigors, three Endurance and three Surgicals. There's a lot of graveyard uh, sort of shenanigans on, uh, on, le on the Legacy uh, online metagame right now. And then just, you know, a cage as a target for Saga. Hey Brad, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Otherwise, this deck looks really fun. Um, obviously, three colors is, is quite strong. The Ancient Tombs as well have some really cool uh, applications. This means that through... Uh, obviously, Yabamaya is a way to combo off with Thespian Stage and Dark Depths at one time because the Yabamaya allows the Dark Depths to tap for mana, which means that if you have something like... Uh, depth stage and a land and a crop rotation in hand you can crop for yav uh and then of course go off uh you can also uh use ancient tomb because that is uh crop rotation for ancient tomb gives you two mana so it nets you a mana uh, which then allows you to go off with duck depths uh, ancient tomb is also just a land that allows you to go something like turn one saga turn two ancient tomb uh, you also have lines just like that with mox diamond uh, ancient tomb also allows you to play a turn two fable maybe a turn three minsk so a lot of small things here. Uh, for interaction as well, we do have Beseju, two copies. The nice thing about Beseju in this list, especially being lands, is that uh, A, you have Loam to actually put Beseju back into your hand and you have Expedition Map to go and find it. Um, so tip, take, traditionally decks like uh, maybe Naya Depths or Maverick don't really play Beseju because you might think, hey, they're another Reliquary deck, surely they should. Um, they're a crop rotation deck and they play Elvish Reclaimer, you have multiple ways to get it. Yes, you have multiple ways to get it into play, 
but you don't always have ways to get it into your hand. So uh, obviously, Besage you doing really well in a deck with four Lachnolomes in a expedition map. One second. I actually have a pretty big announcement after this as well, uh, which I'm super stoked about. So if you're watching, definitely be uh, around till the end. Nice. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the deck tech. I think that's that's pretty cool. Uh, turn two Minsk is very hot as well, especially with Mox Diamond. Um, so really keen to see how this deck goes. Um, I think the opening hands in this sort of match are going to be really interesting um, because I think that's where, as a lands uh, player, someone who's played lands a few times, I wouldn't say I'm a... I would say I'm a player who's played Legacy Lands. I'm not a Legacy Lands player. Uh, your opening hands are kind of your Feast or Famine. And I think as you get more reps with the deck, you really understand what hands you can keep, what hands you can't, and how to evaluate card quality over card quantity, especially with Lands. Because, you know, a 7 with maybe an Exploration might look great, but if you don't have an actual engine, like a Loam, uh, you're obviously just going to be stumbling a little bit. But if you, you know, multiple five with something like Mox, Land, Land, Loam, Land, fantastic. You have Acceleration, you have that Loam to start that engine going. Um, so, yeah. Pretty cool to see how this all uh, goes out. One second, and I'll be... Actually, let's, let's load up a league and, and go from there. Hey Jad, welcome. I hope you're doing well. One second. Uh, all right, let's go. Constructed. We're playing a legacy league i'd love to play more prelims but it's really it's really tough for me because i find that prelims are usually in the middle of the day when i'm working that's always a, a tricky one but I, I i do want to get more legacy prelim content on the channel just because they are only four rounds so you can usually uh get them out pretty well all right we're playing a legacy league panda depths let's go gameplay nice play league Uh, we will go first. We will show Yorion. I do have to get ready for that. Uh, all right, what do we have? We have turn one Reclaimer. Uh, turn two Loam if we really want to get back to Misty. Um, I guess we go... This, this hand isn't too bad. It's a little bit awkward because with the Misty, I want to get a Tager. Hmm. Let, let's, yeah. A few things... To consider with this hand. We could go Savannah into Elvish Reclaimer and then have open Prismatic Ending. Um, down the line, we could most likely get back. Actually, no, because we. Okay, so we go uh, Misty into, let's say, uh, Prismatic Ending or Reclaimer. Uh, so <laughs> and calm. All right. Misty Rainforest, Savannah. Elvish Reclaimer, untap, then we have the options of either Prismatic Ending and Wasteland potentially, or just Loam, get back Misty, which gives us the red source for Fable. So I'm pretty happy to keep this. Especially with Reclaimer and Loam, really nice. Uh, I'll also just keep this here. Right. 
opponent, just a 6 from my opponent, which is kind of nice. You should be able to play, allowed to play 6 mocks. Nice. I guess you could play Chrome mocks if you really wanted to. Oh, Hierarch, okay. This is probably a situation where I'm really happy with Enfer Savannah, because here I'm pretty happy to go Wasteland and also Prismatic Ending. The only awkward thing is that the following turn, the Bajooka Ball comes in tapped. However, um, the map we can play, which is kind of nice. So, do I want to... I don't want to play around days. Or at least I'm, I'm not going to Wasteland first. I'm happy to, to give, that, give them the option if they really want to. I think that's fine. I think that puts them back enough that I'm, I'm happy with that. Maybe not though. Maybe I should have gone more aggressive with uh, like Wasteland first and just give them the option. Yeah, I expect a little bit of Infect as well. Um, okay, we have some options. I think I'm happy to loam into a, a Daze here and try to get back that Misty. Force of Negation would be quite good here, but I, I don't believe uh, Infect would be playing Force of Negation, mostly because they want to uh, obviously control their board on, on their turn most of the time. Uh, I don't mind fetching here and just playing the map either. I don't think holding up Bolt is that great. And if they do play a creature next turn, like a uh, Blighted Agent, I definitely don't want to play into a daze with my only removal spell right now. I should have attacked. Apologies, apologies. I was just looking at chat. <laughs> Here we are. So hopefully we don't uh, lose this game when my opponents are one life. But let's see how this plays out. It could also be... Yeah, I'm going to assume this is actually Bant Natural Order. And uh, not. Huh. Uh, so they could be playing Stifle, which is fine. I'm pretty happy to just loam here. Or at least Wasteland the Trop. Okay. And Loam back. Um, what do I like? I like the... Wasteland... The Ancient Tomb's kind of cool. It allows me to play the Fable around days. And then probably just Flagstones. Although having the Misty in case they get rid of the, the Taker potentially um, isn't too bad. I'm going to force that. More than fine. Pitching into Fairy. Okay, so I'm definitely thinking this is more of a, a Bant uh, Natural Order deck, which has been showing up in popularity. Happy to Dredge. Uh, same targets. They have three cards. Days is fine. Happy to play the bog here. They could be an Uro deck, but happy just to generally get out this mana. Okay. I mean, that's a, a really good showing of how Wasteland and Loam can, can get there. Um, and potentially I did miss a land drop. Apologies. Apologies for that. Um... All right, just a, a quick little announcement. Actually, we're gonna we'll do the announcement after this match. Um, we'll focus in on this first. Uh, so this is a match where I really like the prismatic ending. Uh, I'm going to assume they are a green sun zenith deck and probably a natural order deck. So I think the graph diggers cage makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm not too sure on blast effects. Hey, Jiggle Wall, <laughs> thank you. Um, 
So what are we looking at? We're looking at a Bant deck that plays Mana Acceleration, uh, a lot of creatures that replace themselves, things like Ice Fang uh, potentially Uro. Um, Teferi is a little bit annoying, but not too much. I expect Surgical from them. Um, I think that... Typically got a, a crop, crop pot or two. That makes a lot of sense. Um, because you obviously don't want to two for one yourself or two for two yourself where your resources are probably a little bit better than their blue card. Um, but I, I like that sort of card. So that's you know, that's two cards that I think are great. Um, I think planeswalkers generally against these sort of decks are, are fantastic. Um, I think most of the targets as well. Which is a really good thing to think about when you're playing lands is are all the targets great like there's a lot of decks where you can straight away in sideboarding say okay we're taking out for duke bog it's not relevant death and taxes is a great example um let's take that out and that's that's an easy slot um yeah i think trimming on diamond as well isn't too bad especially seeing that they probably a prismatic ending deck also to fairy bounce isn't that great either um so could trim there endurance is a, an interesting one um Force of Vigor is also a little bit interesting. Um, Hyroblast over Bolt is pretty good. However, Bolt hitting Mana Dorks is quite nice. Yeah, maybe like taking out two Bolts. Um, maybe some number of Endurance. The, the Shadow Spear I don't think is too necessary, but potentially if they get like Progenitus in play... That's where we want to be. Needle. Needle is probably a, a, a clear switch for the Grafdigger's Cage. I don't think, like, naming Teferi is good enough. So I think maybe just, like, one or two Blasts would be fine. And maybe this is where I want to see how the deck goes. Nice. Uh, what do we have here? We have uh, Turn 1 Interaction in, in Swords. We have Flagstones and Crop Rotation, which is fantastic. Not just because we get two lands off this, but if our opponent does Force of Will the Crop Rotation, we still get a land back. So it would still be just a one for two trade, which is actually pretty good. They could also be on Minsk. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, I'm pretty happy to keep this on the draw it's a little bit fairer but i do like that it also just has the i win button of crop for stage i think maybe the only thing i i considered was playing a uh a plateau in the deck but in saying that um plateau nice because it, it is a a, a plane you can get off flagstones we can also get this garden off flagstones so i think that's where garden kind of comes in as just being like a nice uh middle ground mox diamond uh doesn't change a whole lot it means that we can play around days to stomach some extent i think right here i'm happy to play the flagstones and just pass back i don't want to play the mox just yet because i'm not too sure what i want to drop if anything at this stage The reason to mox here is to play around, say, days, if I want a swords on their turn. But I don't mind just getting a little bit more information about my draws in case I draw into a, like, say, a, um, a fetch land. Then I'm probably happy to drop the, the forest in my hand to the mox. But I don't want to put it on the field and get it hit by prismatic ending before I actually get to use it to build out my board. So I think it's a little bit safer in my hand for now. Okay. Also, because I, I, I do think they are going to be a uh, pres uh, a natural order deck, I'm pretty happy just to go after their creatures as soon as they enter play. And Dried Arbor is one to definitely uh, be considerate of. Oof, okay. Uh, that's quite nice. I think this turn we can crop um, for Wasteland and also play the Mox. So if we go... Mox, Pitch, Dark Depths. And then play the Forest. We get to play 
loam around days. I'll play crop around days and then loam. And then if we really like have, like, I don't think we will, but we could endurance ourselves to be like a surgical or something, but obviously I uh, don't want to. So let's go for Mox Pitch Depths. Getting Ancient Tomb is also quite nice. I do like taking off the trop just because it does stop a lot of creatures from coming into play. Mana Dorks, Ice Fang, Green Suns, of course. So we can float the mana with the crop rotation, or with the flagstones. Get rid of it. Uh, we can go and get probably just the Triumph because I don't think we... I guess if we get... yeah, the Triumph makes sense. Go and get a wasteland. Waste this. Loan back these three. Oh my gosh. This deck. <laughs> the value. Look at this board state. We have a loam loam going. We have two pretty great threats in hand. There's a, there's a lot of things to do in this list. There's also chat. <laughs> there's also explaining. So I can definitely see some of the longer games going to time. But I, I actually I do love it. Uh, the question is, do I actually want to loam? And I think here I'm happy to take the draw. Obviously, Ancient Tomb would be great. Uh, Mox would be great. Um, I'm not really looking for anything at the moment. So I actually am just going to draw here. Reclaim is not too bad. Um... This can't fetch up Dried Arbor, which is, is worth noting. Uh, they they didn't go for like, anything on Loam last turn, so I kind of just want to play the Minsk and just see what happens. But I could also uh, hold up Endurance here. But... I mean, if they have, like, a say, a Source to Plowshares, obviously the Reclaimer can be answered quite easily by that. I kind of like slamming the Minsk because even if they don't deal with it, we just have like a lot of options from there. And the more time I give them, the more likely they are to, uh, to find something for the Minsk. Okay. Nice. Especially getting a Tundra, which just our Wasteland can obviously hit. Days is fine. I mean, even next turn, if they play the Tundra down, we have the Wasteland for that. Oh, they're going to play Wasteland. Um, still happy to draw here, to be fair. Okay. Hmm. We're playing Reclaimer. The question is, do I want to play anything into this wasteland? Interesting. Hey, Axe, welcome. I think I can play the wasteland out. If they want to wasteland it, we can just get it back with Loam anyway. This also allows us to play the Reclaim the uh, Endurance out, if need be, around days. True name. Okay. That's fine. We do have a few things we can do. Um, we have Blast Zone for true name, which is quite nice. Do I want to play the Endurance here? That's the only question. Um... I don't think I do. Next turn we'll have two mana anyway. But I think I do want to... Two 
two mana. Can Wasteland this. I think again we just want to draw because I, I kind of have everything we need. Like we have Wasteland for... Hmm. Probably this. Play Blast Zone. And then we can just tick it up twice this turn. But yeah, maybe like uh like Wasteland, Lomit, Wasteland is is where I want to be. They do it. They they have white now, but they they obviously didn't have white. Uro. Okay. I don't mind endurance now. Get them. Get rid of the flagstones. Savannah. There are a lot of options. I think there's probably some that are definitely better than others, but uh, I. I feel pretty good about our current position. Um, here I'm pretty happy just to get a Wasteland. I will Loam. We hit Stage Verdant Flag. I can start with attacking. Hmm. I guess if they have Surgical and Wasteland, I don't want to get rid of the one in play first. So what if we go for Loam first? And here I'm happy just to try to hit their mana as much as possible. See if they have to maybe keep the true name back. We can also use the two mana we have open to tick up the blast zone once to two. That's very true. I, that's very true. Yeah, th that's a great point. That is a great point, Panda. Because I was thinking of um, if the other one goes into the bin, not so much if I have the other one in hand. Do they fire up the wasteland here? Oh, they swords. Okay. That's fair. We do win this race, so I'm happy to loam again. Um... Now, if they want to keep the true name around, they kind of have to keep this wasteland open for the blast zone. And then we can hopefully just get the uh, stage going. Oh wow, they let it untap? Didn't think that was going to happen. Ooh, exploration? Um, this, I believe, is four to activate. Yep. Yeah. Which we... Oh, three. Yeah, three. So we still have that. Nice, nice, nice. C 
see if they fetch anything in end step. No. Ah, oh, another land too. Apologies, apologies, apologies. Uh, because of the fetch, just in case they go like land natural order, I'm pretty happy here to... Uh... I'm actually pretty happy here to hit the wasteland and see what they do. Let me just have a quick think. Like, I'm, I'm a little bit scared of another 3 drop. And if I hit the wasteland here, they either try to hit one of our lands or not. Yeah, I think I'm just overthinking that. Okay. Okay, well now we have Dark Depth next turn. So actually I'm not going to... Oh, I will loam. Um, a Wasteland the Wasteland. Flutter red. Yeah, I think at this stage, I just want to keep uh, trying to get Loam and the that's been stage combo going. They only have two cards in hand as well. I don't think I want to throw it into a Prismatic Ending, so I'm actually just going to Loam here and get back the Garden, the Wasteland. Okay, yeah, like, really tough for them. And actually, for me as well, like, there's, there's a lot going on. There is a lot going on, but I think in general, what I was trying to do there was... Keep building up my mana through obviously things like uh, Blackstones is fantastic. Uh, getting things back with Loam is obviously great as well as keeping that engine going. But also knowing when you have enough threats in play that maybe something like an Exploration or a Mox Opal could really get there. Um, and even like, you know, thinking about Yorion as well. If we have the three mana left over, we can put Yorion in our hand. So uh, a lot to think about there. Um, do we? All right, Let, let's let's do have a little announcement here. Uh, on the weekend of March thirty first, April first, and April second, I'm going to be hosting the second Legacy Weekend, uh, which will be seven streams with seven different co-hosts, and this time we'll have Callum Smith, Thomas Hep, Matt Vuk, Achilles twenty seven, Loma Boy. Sahar, and a special guest. Sahar, very cool to see you in chat. Lovely to have you. Uh, really, really looking forward to this. Um, it's going to be, yeah, pretty epic. The first one was fantastic. Uh, a lot of fun. It had a lot of really good feedback. Um, you can also find this on Twitter. Uh, Kai Saratarix has also put up a prize as uh, anyone who wants to uh, retweet this and get the message around, which is really nice uh, with a, a token set. But yeah, really cool to see, um, obviously, some of my uh, UK friends in Sahar and uh, Cal Smith. Uh, and then pulling some people out of retirement, I guess, with Achilles, Negator, um, and Loma Boy, which is pretty cool. So this should be pretty sweet. Uh, but yeah, just stay tuned on the channel, and that'll be coming up in the not-so-distant future. But super stoked. We'll most likely stick to... Uh, green white x decks but also look at some of the decks that these players have been championing um in current metagames should be pretty pretty good who is the surprise the surprise is coming but i think uh it'll be pretty cool to announce it negator is a good egg uh for those of you who don't know uh thomas hep negator 77 
currently has the record for the most trophies. Or did he get overtaken? I don't think he got overtaken. Uh, I know there was another very good player who got a, a multitude of trophies all on different decks as well, which is very cool to see. But we'll see. 100% a, a champion, Zaha. I've definitely seen some of your, your paper uh, results. They've been um, really, really strong. Which is great to see. Consistent. Consistent. All right. MM17. We are showing Yurion. And what do we have here? We have uh, Exploration, which is great. We have a, a Turn 2 Saga. We have a white source, I guess, with swords. But we the only engine we currently have here is Saga. Um... Which is fine, but I'm not sure if that's... Yeah, I, I, I guess it is a, a keep. Turn 1 Saga with Exploration means a turn 2 dude, which is great. Um, we also... Oh, it, it's tough because there's, there's worlds where I want to play the like forest and then the snow-covered forest to hold up crop turn 1 in case they're on some sort of graveyard deck. So we can go and get bog. But I think in that case I'd probably... And disruption as well. Yeah. Hey, Gizlo. That would be very cool. Let's keep this. And I think, just because it is me, I'm a little bit of a safer player. And I think here, turn one exploration into hold up crop is pretty nice. But there's definitely, you know, a lot of consideration there for, for Saga as well. Flooded Strand. Okay, probably more of a, a fairy deck. Oh, it's going to be, okay. It is going to be Death Shadow. And thankfully here, we have Double Swords and Crop. I don't really want to throw this Crop into a Daze, so I'm pretty happy just to, just to 6 here. That's fair. Okay. The old, uh, come on. Like, is there a Thoughtseize bug? Hmm. Come on now. <laughs> okay. Bug or no bug, we take those. Yeah, I can, I can see that. To can see, wonder. Cool. To be fair, this could also be a uh, some sort of combo deck. I, I don't think it's actually Doomsday or anything, um, because of the Water Grave. I'm going to assume this is Death Shadow. So obviously we have Death Shadow, we have Grief. Uh, some some play uh, a Gomag. Obviously can't be Pyroblasted, which is big. Um, but yeah, obviously looking for a threat early on. I don't think I'm going to use the crop rotation for anything here. I'm actually not too sure what I want. I could get mana. I could get something like a flagstones. Um, yeah, I think you were just passing with the, the saga open. Bolt's also nice because I don't think my opponent would really think about lightning bolt here. Question is what I want to get with Saga. I think it's going to be map, just to make sure I'm hitting my land drops, probably getting a, a fetch land. Okay. That makes me think they have Gurmag, but thankfully we have a, a few options. Map into Maze or Blast Zone? Ooh, yeah. Strix is fine. A little bit annoying, but not too bad. The really nice thing about Saga in these matchups is that... Ooh, they're going to reanimate. Okay. They're going to go down to six. All right. Another three in... This Bolt's live, which is pretty hilarious. We draw an exploration. Okay. Um... Yeah, I think now Spear is actually quite good because it also just gets us into Bolt range. 
Mox Diamond's obviously off. Map's a little bit slow. A land in a diamond would have been nice, but I actually think, yeah, Shadow Spear here is, is quite solid. No point swinging here. But yeah, a land up the top would actually allow us to um, do a, a lot of damage. Maybe even le lethal with this Lightning Bolt. A lot of cantripping this game. I feel like with the start we had, our, my opponent probably wanted to have a more threat-heavy start. Uh, and obviously that's just not where this this kind of matchup has gone so far. Oh, they're playing a Death Shadow when they know about Double Sword. That definitely makes me think they have access to Force of Will in hand. Hmm. I'm probably happy here to... They could have Stubborn Denial, which is a card to play around in this in this uh, situation. I could try to crop, but losing a land is, is pretty heavy here. Most likely cropping for a white source for swords. Obviously, Shadow Spear on a Construct doesn't do a whole lot when they have a 7-7 to block with. Could also equip and pass. Hmm. Yeah, I guess right now, like, just losing a land to the crop and getting it countered is just so big. And when my opponent has played a Death Shadow, knowing about the two swords, I just don't see a world where they don't have Force of Will. Okay, we actually don't really mind about that. Now a blue card, that's fine. Three ponders, two brainstorms. I never noticed that these mermaids are holding clouds. Is that a thing? Or is that... What is that? They're not clouds, they're underwater. What is that? Calamari? <laughs> Are they having lunch? <laughs> no attacks would be also just be a huge win here. Okay. Hmm. only have the saga so they're at four cards i don't mind trying to bait out some sort of force of will here just because we're not dead to leaf we're not dead to, to damage on the crackback i'd much rather this get forced or oh, taste okay than a uh, an actual threat. The question is, do I want to attack here with the construct? And I believe I do. At least the four four. If they block with just the baleful strix, uh, they go to three. Oh, but then they're so close to just lethal if they can get rid of the construct in play. Yeah, tough. Oh, okay. Ah. Uh, oh, so they're at two. Oh my gosh. We gain three, go to 16. Maybe, just maybe. 11, tw 
12. Oh, that, that's exact Z's. Ah, oh, so bad. Rough. Tough. There's nothing we can do here. Tough. Cool games. Cool games. Alright, Death Shadow. Uh, I like the Prismatic. Um, we don't need the Caracas. That's a pretty easy cut. The Blast effects are, are interesting. Um, the Needle is probably a card I'm happy to get rid of as well. That can happen. That, that's just that's just part of the deck. Uh, I could see like Ghost Quarter as well, but Ghost Quarter's. I don't want to go. Like we have thirty eight lands, so I can definitely see worlds where we drop on lands. Yeah, PVDH. That's a, a fantastic point, and definitely crossed my mind as I was taking Lethal to the face. Um, I think their attacking first would have done a lot. Ah, Lackey as well. Boom. This is why I love having the Legacy All-Stars in chat. I get the feedback that I need to become a better player. <laughs> because, yeah, I think, like, kind of 101 for competitive magic is, like, if you don't need to cast something pre-combat, don't. Go to combat and then cast stuff in your in your main phase, too. It's going to be okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, let's let's cut some crops. Uh, I think just having maybe, like, three blasts is, is fine. Hey, Bookish Matt. Very cool to see you and Matt, uh, you and Mark, the other day. I really enjoyed that. I think something like this is is okay. Alright. Let's play Yorion. Um, hmm. I think this is a bit of a trap hand. Yes, we have removal, but we don't really have, like, the engine that this deck needs to, to get going. Um, so I'm pretty happy to mull this. Like, we have no ways to play extra lands a turn. We have no ways to, obviously, like, engine things out like Loam, so pretty happy to mull that. Uh, this is better. We have Exploration, but we don't really have anything else. But I think this is fine because we have the Minsk to play towards. Um, but we probably want to get a Savannah off the Exploration. I think here we're probably bottoming the Swords to play. Oh, sorry, the uh, Prismatic Ending and just keeping the Swords. Uh, in case of something like a, you know, turn one reanimate Street Wraith, I guess. Hmm. I think that's it. I think we're keeping the six and we're bottoming the prismatic. Because most of the early threats as well, we just care about swords, so. Pretty happy to go. Windswept. Savannah. Exploration. And then, probably don't want to play the Wasteland just yet. I'm happy to play the stage. Obviously, like, a fetch land off the top would be fantastic. We can play, like, a turn two Minsk, right? Pretty crazy. Okay. That's a, a great draw. Because now we actually have a uh, Thespian Stage and Urza Saga. Okay, now we're getting there. Hey Wong Deck, thanks for the follow. Love the name. Um, I actually think at some point here... I was going to say I should copy, but I think I'm okay with just allowing this to happen. <laughs> Wise words, PVDH. Okay. I think end step we're just going to copy the saga. Oh, they're in Wasteland. Uh, in that case... So if we Wasteland the Wasteland, if they hit our saga, we can copy it with stage. If they hit our stage, we can copy the island. But if they hit the savannah, then it's a little bit rough. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm pretty happy to do nothing here as well. Hey, Axe, thanks for the Prime sub. A huge thank you. Hope you're well. Yeah. So I think here we're happy just to... Copy Saga. Hmm. I wonder how many basics they have. They have one island. <laughs> Thank you, MTG Goldfish. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> uh, they're the moments. They're the moments. That's why we stream. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um... I think, again, we're happy just to run this back. There's nothing that changes too much. Yeah. yeah. That's... Again, just one of those, those hands that just doesn't really work out. Like, we have a 7 that doesn't actually have a red source either, so... Pretty happy to mulligan this. Just doesn't really have a plan. Uh, what do we have here? We, the mana here is pretty terrible. We have the like, exploration and a reclaimer, but this doesn't really get anywhere. I think there's a better five, especially when you think about uh, like loam and two lands as three cards. No green, especially, yeah. Um. <laughs> no. Like, turn one map. Sajiri step tapped. Yeah. No. Let's go for card. Yes. Yes. Is this like a... Do we keep exploration, loam, and like two lands? Is that the four? I think that's the four, right? Saha. Too kind. Too kind. Thank you for the subscription and your faith. I very much appreciate your support. Um, alright. Could keep the Besteju, but I think this is okay. What's the best card off the top? Probably a source to Plash Airs is just like redundancy. Something to have against a, a creature. <laughs> Come on, man. Ooh, Minor Misstep. Okay. That's pretty cool. I do like how Minor Misstep is actually getting a lot of play these days. A, a lot of play. It's getting played. And it's actually getting good results as well, which is cool. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Savannah. Tennis. Okay. Easy. Easy. Minute. There. All right. So they're obviously working towards a death shadow here. You live in the US, play Legacy and some Modern. I play anything green, mostly Brews. Last played Green White Depths with Solemnity. Nice. That's very cool. This must be a Gomag Angler. Okay. Uh, we do not want a Loam here. We want to draw a land. Okay. Hey, Geodude. A huge thank you. 
You just subscribed for three months in advance? Too kind. Too kind. A huge thank you. That means, yeah, a lot. A lot. Thank you very much. A land we're back in this, especially if they try to play a Death Shadow out here. We can obviously uh, sword the Gurmag and, and go from there. Nice. I kind of want to take Bob Man's thank you for the sub, too kind. I actually want to allow this. But I, I feel like they're currently in the position where, although they are losing life to obviously get a Death Shadow down at some stage, I feel like my opponent will just, like, play draw. Kind of like draw, attack, pass, draw, attack, pass until I make a, a change. And I don't really want to take an extra five here, so I'm pretty happy to try to get this off the table. Savannah. Um, I think we do want to loam just because although we hit Reclaimer I do want to try to hit uh, Maze of Ith. I think Maze of Ith would be a fantastic draw they pitched a daze to the force they have another days. Uh, so I think here it just has to be loam into maze. I think loaming into maze and getting kind of three draws for it is more likely. You're more likely to find maze by drawing than loaming. Really? Ah, uh, crops. There's two crops. Okay. Yeah, that does change things a little bit. Maybe then we do draw, because we could even draw into like an Elvish Reclaimer that just blocks. Uh, we get a 2-2. Two -two. We get a 2-2 two -two with the Fable. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. The little goblin that could. Don't you do anything pre-main. <gasps> Four mana. It's just a hard card. Hard, hard cast snuff out. Yeah. Tough. Alright. We are 1-1. One, one. That's a tough one. All right, Lazu. Uh, we have a pretty solid hand. We have, you know, uh, turn one Reclaimer for probably a Taiga. Uh, and then we have turn two, like, Bolt and Wasteland. We have Loam with a, a Wasteland and a Fetchland. We have double Wasteland, so pretty happy to, to keep this. Plateau. Okay. Maybe a Red-White Initiative deck. Kind of makes me just want a Wasteland here more than anything. Like a plateau into like ancient tomb is pretty pretty scary. Also gives us a draw into potentially uh like exploration or something. But I feel like resetting the game here is just better for us. Yeah, let's just let's just keep it keep it resetting. We're getting these back as well, so. Hey PVDH, too kind. Thank you very much. I very much appreciate you and the work you do for the community and your set reviews. Very, very cool. Oh, Chrome Mox. 
Legion War Boss. Okay. Oh, okay. At least this wasn't a soul land. I'm pretty happy not to see the Okay. Oh my gosh. At least we can bolt it, I guess. And then we can try to take the initiative. <gasps> oh, but it doesn't work out the way we want it, does it? Because we only have the one green source. Oh! Oh, uh, no. I was going to say we could, like, ghost quarter ourselves, but... I think we just bolt here. <laughs> hey Geo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being on my side. I think I'm more than likely just to remove this right now, especially because this gains an ability when it attacks. And then next time we can try to get some shenanigans going with our exploration. Wait till they forge though? Yeah, that's true. I get, yeah, I, I don't think these versions play touch and I guess this can only tap for red anyway. Three mana. Nothing. Okay, let's... I think we're getting Re Reclaim it down this turn as a 3-4 and trying to steal that uh... I guess we could like be greedy and go and get our own Ghost Quarter. Yeah. I actually don't mind that. So we go Exploration Play Ghost Quarter, Ghost Quarter ourselves, get a forest, play Reclaimer, play Saga. Hey Lawrence, very cool to see you. you know, so many like, just people that I really admire within the Legacy community in chat right now. Nice. Nice. Alright. Pretty sweet turn. Obviously a Magus is a little bit tough, but I don't think we really care about it too much. Hmm. One, two, three, four mana. At least it can't be a Minsk. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh... Hmm. So they get a free creature. I think it's worth playing the Saga and potentially going towards a line with Shadow Spear. And work towards Lage, that's true. Tough. What do they get? Oh, should I have accidentally... Thankfully, yeah, okay. Thankfully no Magus, but Magus there would have been a, a pretty big issue. Hey, Stencil. Yeah, I think it's Lage as well.
don't think we have an out. Like, we could try to maze, but that's not great. Chalice. Alright. We have some time, which is nice. Another land would have been sweet, because then we could have actually gone for Dark Depths and copied the same turn. Um, we're actually dead to two attacks, so one block with Maze doesn't do it. Um, Mav with Sentinel was really cool. I was really happy with that list. If we make a token, it becomes a 2-2. Two, 3-3. Two, three, three, potentially a 4-4. Four, four with um, a Shadow Spear. Hmm. Like we could get Maze to come in untapped next turn that only deals with one creature as well. This just doesn't block very well. We can't Tabernacle. Hmm. Yeah, Cavern would be cool. Like even our Blast Zone, of course, at four is just too far away. Let's have a quick look at the list again. Hmm. Think, think, think. Next time we take five as well. So. <laughs> we actually are just dead to even just one season dungeon you're getting through. Hmm. I guess like there's a world where we get to... like swords our own depths potentially but even that like that doesn't lead to a win yeah so we, we find the swords but a little bit too late unless we had like a yavamai in the bin oh i should have asked floated man there as well apologies yeah i actually don't think we have a, a line there unfortunately but um, okay. Well, I think this matchup is really about trying to hit their mana as much as possible. So actually going after the, the Chrome Moxes is pretty nice. Um, the Endurances as Flash Creatures also make me kind of like that as well. Hey, Evan. A huge thank you for the sub. Hope you're well. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Epic Echo. Oh, hey, Jimbo. Welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, okay, so this matchup, we can probably assume they're not on anything that Caracas actually hits. Um, the crop rotation seems fine, explorations. The needle, I don't think really hits anything out of initiative. Let's have a quick think. They may want, yeah, maybe it's worth just having the needle in the deck, even just as an artifact to make my creatures a bit bigger. Um, the loam seem fine. Magus's Moxon. Like Bajugabog, of course, I think is fine. I think just going down a little bit on lands is, is more than fine. Yeah. I think because we have Wasteland as well, I'm happy to cut the needle and just stick with this. Alright. Let's go for Broke. Hmm. Oh, okay. We do have a turn two Fable here. We could crop away the forest for an Ancient Tomb. Which is interesting. But is that enough? We go forest pass crop rotation. Hmm. It doesn't really have like a, an, an ongoing engine though, which is rough. Ramp things with crop and go full age. Yeah, that's very true.
Yeah, I think other than like Chalice, of course, I'm pretty happy to keep this. Also, just having potentially crop into... Uh... Oh, I will play a land here as well. I'm going to play the Forest. And then we do have crop into Flagstones if we want to hit a turn one threat with Swords. And then the following turn... We can't play the Fable, but we do get some, some value there. Squee. Okay, well, let's... Wait, did we... Did we take... <laughs> okay, okay. Obviously, the first creature we see is a legendary creature. And I assume a one-of, let's be fair. Um, is this worth dropping for? It probably is. Yeah. And then we stop here as well, correct? Yeah, nice. Flagstones. Ooh, okay. Okay, okay. I still think here I want to crop for a wasteland. We get to float a mana as well. Oh, it doesn't really matter, but... I think just taking them off the Ancient Tomb here is really powerful. I think we, we, we have to, to some sense. Yeah. Probably don't mind just getting the Triome here, to be fair. Okay, that's quite good for us. Yeah. It's tough because I, I, there is a part of me that wants to take me off the loam just for a, a turn, but I really don't want them getting a 3-drop into play. So I think we loam again this turn and try to get to a stage where they just don't have a creature to play and we get the, the Fable down. I will... I will loam here. Force of Vigor Prismatic ending Mox Diamond. Okay. If they don't play a land here, I'm happy just to draw. They play a land. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I'm probably happy to play the Fable. Uh, and I don't want to loam. Next time we get to draw to discard to. If I play the Fable, I'm not getting extra mana anyway. And we do have Fable into Wandering. Oh, okay. Let's go flagstones. I just need a stumble, just a little stumble here from my opponent on their mana. That's not a stumble. 
Uh, oh my gosh. That's also a legendary creature. That's huge. Like, to, to have the Krakus on turn one. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. I'm not even going to see. I'm not even going to see. Tough. Tough. Hey, Kent. Thanks for the follow. Tough one. All right, on the playthrough, Monarch. Let, let's do this. Here we go. <laughs> Cloud Initiative got banned, yeah. Uh, oh, look. This is an interesting one. We're playing against the Yurion deck. So it's either going to be like Death and Taxes or some sort of Bounce deck. Which, this hand isn't great against anyway. It is a turn two, like, Saga and try to go from there. And then, like, Ancient Tomb works well with, uh... If we had green, it would be amazing, yeah. I think, I think this is... Because there's no green, I'm happy to mulligan this, but... It's so close... We have a Mox, we have a turn two, we have a turn one Fable. Okay. Okay, pretty happy to keep this and probably just put back the tab. Seeing that we have the, the Bolt. Yeah, the seven's definitely interesting. Like having like just a uh, Saga on its own is very powerful. I think tab is gonna be, mm. oh, it could be DNT, but if it's DNT, I, I think Bog is the card that I don't want. And then this kind of lines up quite well against any of their plays. Maybe the Bog was the card that I wanted to actually pitch to the Mox. Hmm. I think it's Wasteland just in case Tabernacle is relevant. And just because there's obviously more copies of Wasteland in the deck as well. Okay. Okay. Nice. Uh, pretty happy to uh, discard the tab here and probably keep the crop and the bolt. Okay. I'm also going to put a draw step here for me. Because uh, one thing you can do with crop rotation is at the end of your draw step, after you've seen what you've drawn for turn, you can crop for Urza Saga, which when it comes into play, you get a counter. And then when you go to your main phase one, you get a second counter. So you kind of speed it up full turn, and then you're able to actually get a construct out of it that same turn as well, which is pretty cool. Oh, I could have also put Yorian into hand, and I think that was actually correct to put Yorian into hand. I just totally forgot about it, so let's keep it up. Yeah, because this turn at worst, we're using both of these, which is two mana, and then we have three left over anyway, so let's hope that's fine. Lion Sash. Um, I don't really care about that, but we do have the bolt for it if, if needed. I kind of want to keep the bolt for mum, just in case. I think what I'll do is, if they don't put anything in their end step, then I will take it away. But I'll also see what we can draw it into. Yeah, I, I don't think next time we're going to be stuck for mana. In a meaningful way. Okay. Yeah, 
Sash is quite good. I guess we actually get a little bit stuck here because we had, we have six mana in total, two for six. We don't have enough to play Fable and Yurion and Bolt, so yeah, a little bit tough, but hopefully that's okay. Yeah, Sash, especially with mana as well. And they didn't have Mum, which is great. Um, a little bit worried. I guess I'm not too worried of Cauldra because we have Crop for uh, Maze. Also have like Crop for Caracas if they play Athalia or something. We do have a Sajiri step as well, which is quite nice. Loam would be would be real nice. But yeah, just just little things there, like you know, missing out on the Yorion on turn two, and then yeah, just not taking Lion Sash too seriously and not bolting there, then untapping and being able to to do both again, I guess. Um, Crude is fine. Wonder if they're getting like a. Potentially a uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth to turn off the Fable, but I feel like then we just get there on the board. Stoneforge. Uh, nothing to do here. Reclaimer's interesting, but do I actually want it? Oh, we can give it haste? That's very cool. Okay. That's pretty sweet. What can I get tapped? Maybe just a, a saga? Yeah. Ah, oh, my bad. I should have... Uh... No, that's fine. We can do it in second main. Play Reclaimer. What do I want to get? Probably is just a Saga. Can do it in their turn as well, that's very true. Oh, Blast Zone, the Vile's pretty interesting. Uh, but they already have the Stoneforge. They did get Kaldra. We do have Crop as well for... Maze, which they can port, but... Hmm... Yeah, I think Saga's fine. Especially with all these treasures in play as well. Yeah, so I believe what the uh, the Kiki Jiki kind of thing is, is that once you have two of these, you can use one to copy the other, the new one to copy another. So you can do it in their end step, and then untap with them all, and then attack with them all. Which is pretty sweet. Be 
Bingo. Nice. We do have Splinter Twin at home. <laughs> yeah, Splinter Twin at home. I like it. I love it. Wasteland's not too bad because we have the crop. I think I'm happy to use the crop here as well. Especially since we're only on two lands. It's actually quite nice. And honestly, at this stage, I think just getting flagstones is fine. Oh, actually, maybe it... Maybe it is Maze, because if they want to play Cauldre this turn and take us down to 8, they can't port it in the same turn, which is kind of nice. So I think I do like Maze here, just to keep us in the game. I guess they could wisp it out if they have a flick wisp, but at least then that's like not the worst. It's better than like the, the mox timer getting whisked or, or something like that. Skyclave, okay. Okay. They probably now just uh, port the maze and our upkeep. Yeah, I think we're fine with Reclaimer going as well. At least if they um, port in our upkeep, they then can't put in Cauldra to block one of our goblins. But I think we actually want to attack with them just because we get the two treasure tokens for the reflections kind of effect. Hmm. Yeah, I think we will make the token they try to kill as well. The only downside is that it, it takes away the need for them to port down the maze in their turn. Which I, I don't mind. Like, I don't mind losing a goblin to make them have to use the port. Oh, Batiskull, okay. Kind of changes things. Hmm... Yeah, I think now we definitely maze. I guess because it, it it allows us to keep another creature. I guess the tough part is as well is that if they do have just swords in response to reflections targeting the other reflection. Also kind of cool in like a really long game. I assume that if you Yorian out the reflections, they come back as fables, which give you more goblins. And then tick up again, of course. Well, they put Yorian into hand. Interesting. Oh, wait, did they get Batiskull and not...
Hmm, they go 14. I don't think there's a way to... Yeah, just let this happen. And then end step, we uh, just try to make a bunch of tokens. Especially because we get to maze the one they block with. Copying a reflection does just make another reflection. Um, but obviously that one has haste, which allows you to copy another one. They have the sword. Oh. Doesn't change a whole lot. We're definitely casting it. Oh, wait, we're in natural step. Oh, oh good. I thought for a second because we used the uh treasure we won't be able to weren't going to be able to take that back. I think I just want to take out the Skyclave with the Goblin Shaman copy. And then we kind of have the board stalled a little bit. I guess they do have the port to get rid of the maze, but we still have pretty good blocks otherwise. The question is, do I want to put Yorin into hand? And I think I probably do. The, the mana otherwise isn't doing a whole lot. Definitely a match that takes time as well. And being down on time, especially in game one, isn't too great. Especially when I also go we're down on board a little bit. And then even if the Batterskull dies, they get to, like, replace it with the Yorion as well. If they attack with just the Batterskull, we can just block with the Illusion token. Or just maze it. I thought they might at least, uh, tap down, but no. One thing they could have done as well is activated Stoneforge, held priority, activated Vile. Oh no, because he's not instant speed, yeah. Oh gee, oh gee. Uh, I'll block, and then I'll maze. And then just six. But now they get value off the Recruiter, the Stoneforge Mystic. Pretty tough. I assume they just get like a... Either a Solitude or a Flicker Wisp off the Recruiter. It's very true, Jide. Yeah, I guess because the, tre the treasures are always there that putting the Orion into hand doesn't make like a whole lot of sense. Hmm.
Torch is pretty good here. Jit. Okay. Uh, we don't want to use... I, I don't think we actually have like a great way out of the game that we kind of just have to go back to the drawing board, go to the sideboard. Uh, the Force of Vigors and the Prismatic Ending are quite nice. The Bajukabog is a pretty easy cut. The Needle's nice. Shadow Spear map. Hmm. Yeah, I think for time consistency as well, yeah. Like even like an extra two minutes would be really valuable here. Um, Swords and Bolt are great. I think the Mox Diamonds are fantastic as well as just getting those uh, sort of starts where we can do a fair amount. Um, I don't think Endurance is really needed. Like a 3-4 Flyer, a 3-4 that can block Flyers is quite nice, but I think there's just better cards. Um, the Minsks still seem great. Emperor, Fable. Yeah, Reclaimer does die to a whole lot. And I feel like they're going to be packing a... Uh, removal for a while, so I think I, I could definitely see that. Yeah, it's very true, trying to find a, uh, a loam and get that, that time down, which I guess is part of, of MTGO. Right. A Force of Vigor in the opening would be very nice, because things like Rest in Peace or potentially Leyline. Um, this isn't too... This is an exploration hand that doesn't have a whole lot going for it, but it does have, like, map for Saga specifically. Turn 1, probably exploration just off a basic forest and then play flagstones. And then play map. I don't mind that. Map also gives you a lot of, a lot of opportunities as well. I don't, yeah, I think other than alone, this hand is actually quite good the more you look at it. And I'm pretty happy just to get my mana on point here, so I'm going to go for the forest, the exploration, flagstones, the map. This also means next turn we could play both Wasteland and get Tabernacle to, to deal with a turn one mum if they play like a Caracas, which is pretty sweet. Okay. Um, Ghost Quill doesn't work here, unfortunately. Blast Zone does deal with the exploration, unfortunately. I don't mind getting Tab in this position. Just to slow them down a little bit. Stops like a turn 2 Stoneforge, if they want to keep the mum around. Could get Saga. Tab 2 Reactive. Maybe it just is Saga. Yeah, I think Saga's my plan, so I should just stay with Saga. Probably hold the Wasteland for now as well. I might want to cycle this garden as well, so I don't want to play it just yet. Double planes. Stoneforge. Okay. Not too bad, as we still have the maze. One, two, three. So we have two mana left over if we want a maze and also saga next turn. So obviously a two drop would be kind of cool. Lime would be fantastic. Swords is pretty nice, let's be honest. I think it's just going to be Maze and Wasteland. We could also Needle Mum if we wanted to. I, 
kind of hope they don't attack with anything because we get get to actually use the maze for mana to cycle uh, garden. Like drawing a crop would be pretty insane if we could either crop away the saga or potentially get a uh, stage to copy the saga. They must have a land here because I think otherwise they would have actually just held up. Oh, they're playing the torch. Nice. Shout out to uh, Jason and Evan. Okay. So let's go one, two, three. Cycle. Needle Stone Forge Mystic's also quite strong. <laughs> okay. Reclaim is fine, I guess. Minsk. Okay. Um, I probably still want a, a construct here. And then, yeah, I think we're getting Needle here. And just naming Stoneforge. Get to attack for three. And then I probably just want to tap the maze here to play the Reclaimer. Hold up Wasteland, hold up Flagstones. I guess it's like maybe a just in case I could keep the maze up. Because the Wasteland at instant speed isn't that relevant. What could be relevant in it is like Jide equip attack. Yeah, I don't think anything uh, actually... Like holding up the Wasteland, I think I was just too scared of actually nothing. Okay. Solitude. So one thing we don't have right now is red mana. I guess in the worst case, we could wasteland ourselves on the flagstones to go and get the triome, but it's in the garden, sadly. It's in the graveyard. It is a garden. Apologies. Um, we do have two attacks. Like, if they want a swords one, then we can just obviously block with another, but they're just going to let that through. I think here I'm happy to wasteland the Caracas. Hey Min, welcome. Hope you were doing well. Keeping off four mana is obviously relevant. But not as much because they have the uh Stoneforge Mystics to put in Torch, go and get a basic, hold up Batter Skull. Torch is pretty sweet, for those of you who are unaware, Torch is pretty much an unplayable card. However, it gives you the initiative, so it makes the card. <laughs> pretty much how you would say it, I guess.
One thing I will say about this deck is that games are long. <laughs> uh. I can also say that after this match, I have another pretty cool announcement. Come on, Red Source. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. This is what we want. We just need... We just need a Red Source. And that's so close, but that, that, it's not good enough. Just not good enough. Um, I guess that does get rid of the Batterskull, which is kind of cool. So I guess we just attack him with both, right? Besage you, Batterskull. Then they have some kind of... Well, I guess they don't have weird blocks, but... Yeah, I guess, like, this might actually give us the initiative. It actually does matter how we tap here as well. Um, we're just going to respond to this with the Seiju. Time here is also of the essence. What are they doing here? I, I think here... We just want a swords in case... Uh, do we? No. Like, if they get pro-white, that's fine. Like, my only thought is if they... Pro-green. Interesting. Why did they use the mum? I thought they might have been giving like pro white and then swords the other one. Wow. Now we remove the mum, we get a blocker, and we have maze for the other attacker? Okay. 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 Sits up, drinks water. Boom. Uh, I am just going to Swords right now. doesn't really matter if it's in second main or not. Play this. That could really change the game. Yeah. Um, just little things like that. Like, the Besager was actually a great draw because, to be fair, a red source for Minsk doesn't do a whole lot. Maybe they want you to win this, so you lose to time. Thank you. Thank you, Jide. Always, always looking on the, uh, the good side. Thursday night.
Wasteland Maze. Okay. Okay. At least now they have to attack with both to gain the initiative. But then we have two attackers to get it back. Yes, there's no point blocking here. We can't even trade with one. Alright. Hmm. Yeah, I guess red is a little bit tough in this. I guess it is the splash color to some extent. Maybe not. Four Bolt, three Minsk. Recruit is pretty good. <laughs> That's very true. All right, here we go. They have a four three Thalia. They have a oh, one one recruiter. Uh, this is a tough one. I, I think it's just Bolt the Thalia attack through. They do have a Flickwisp though. Minsk, tick up, attack, but the attack just gets blocked by the Thalia anyway, so. Okay. Extreme. A, a huge thank you. A huge thank you for the uh, the sub. You guys are too kind. Too kind. Okay. Uh, I think here we're actually just going to forge. Um, yeah. Probably on this because this is obviously a colored creature. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, here we go. Uh, we are just sixing here, to be fair. <laughs> I like that they haven't at all uh, trailblazed. So next time we get to Minsk, which is quite nice, I wonder if the recruiter, a wisp on recruiter, just gets another wisp.
or if the wisp goes after the construct. I assume it hits the uh, the recruiter here. Okay, that's not really an issue. Swords? Swords would be great here. Four mana and swords. Crop's not too bad either. We can give pro if needed. So let's let's start off with that. Oh, wait a second. We can trap them for five, so we can give pro white, right? Oh, so close. So close. I don't think we're attacking with both here, but I do it like attacking with just one. And then if they more than double block, we do have the crop rotation. Oh, <gasps> we do have green up because of the crop, thankfully. Okay. There's nothing I can really do here anyway. Um, do we have another maze? No. Mm. Where is maze? Over here. Okay. No. But we do have crop for blast zone, which is kind of neat. I think crop for blast zone might actually do it. So they have two cards in hand. Maybe they get Solitude here. They get Solitude. Which means we can get Sajiri Step. Oh, Loam? <sighs> Alright, let's Loam first. Get back Maze. Saga Garden uh, Play the Saga Nice Play the Maze Nice Tick up on Boo They probably try to Solitude in response Which is fine I think we actually don't go For Sajiri step here, we go for Blast Zone, and then attack with the creature. I think that's better. Sorry chat, I'm just going to dive into this game for a second and then come back out on the other side, hopefully, in a great position. Blast Zone. Oh, no, but it's not coming in at three! Oh, for some reason I thought it would come in at three. It obviously doesn't come in at three. That was terrible. Oh my gosh, what are you doing, mate? What are you doing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, we, we have to attack. Yeah, I should have given pro-white. There's a few things there we could have done differently. 
Apologies, that's... Yeah, for some reason. For some reason I thought that's how it worked, but obviously it doesn't. Alright. Oh, will they get a free card here as well? Yikes. Okay, at least that's just a three drop. Yeah, stay up on clock. All right, we got this. They have two cards. All right, so here we're just going to put four mana into Blast Zone, which makes it X equals three. Which is fantastic because it hits all of these and we get a 4 4 back. Uh, we're not going to loam just for time time consistency or time management, I will say. Bolt's pretty strong. Um, there's no reason to do this now. 3, 4, and hold up Bolt. Okay. So this time we get to activate Blast Zone, deal with these, get a 4-4, and also the uh, Urza Saga token. We also get to hold up Bolt, because it's 1-2 mana for the Saga, 1 mana for the Bolt, and then 1-2-3 for the Blast Zone. So let's go 1-2-3. Nice. is fine. Spirit's okay. Alright, let's make our token. I could have bolted them if I really wanted to, but I think we're in a pretty good position either way. Alright, upkeep. We'll draw. Don't want to loam. I don't really care about the loam. Okay. Um, let's make another dude. And then probably Shadow Spear. The map for Caracas is also kind of cool. Uh, maps in the bin, it must be. That's cool. Um, one, two. Probably equip to this. They're going to swords. Sure. Um, in that case, happy just to attack, hold up maze. Maybe it was worth going for Shadow Spear there because then it just all tramples over. Probably also just want to pass. I think this game is coming down to time, which does have an effect on like this this section. But they're on zero cards. They do get to forge here, but we have the bolt. And then we can six. They have one card in hand. They still have Yurion. Nice. Send it back. All 
Alright. Uh, pretty sweet hand. Turn one loam with, with Mox. Pretty happy to keep this. Okay. Um, we will, sorry. Oh, play this. Yes. I do want to play a, oh my gosh. Yeah, this is still fine. Play this, pitch this. Loam this back. We will loam. We get some hits. Oh wow, they're allowing that? Okay. Gonna make this now in, in six. Sure. Oh, my bad. My bad. Yeah, sorry. Should have made a creature there, of course. We can loam it back. I should have actually like also got that back, so. That's pretty fair, but I think here we can actually just six the whole time, which is really sad. But there's a, yeah, there's a few things we could uh we could do better here. If they're not doing anything, I'm not doing anything. Ah, <laughs> I should actually just yeah. I will get back this loom so that I don't have this come up anymore. Oh my gosh, I didn't mean to. Oh, there's a Minsk. Meh. <laughs> uh... Well, that was a uh, uh, kind of sour way to end the game, but that happens on MTGO. Um, one kind of cool thing, though is uh for those of you who are on the stream before you would have seen that i announced this which is pretty sweet which will be a weekend of legacy uh on dukes on twitch on 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 stream we did this a few months back now this is gonna be the second one and we're gonna have some pretty cool uh co-hosts in cal smith tom hep matt vook achilles is coming back loma boy uh sahar and a special guest and because you're all here, you're supporting the channel, I'm happy to tell you who the special guest is. Uh, and that's going to be Friday night's special guest to ring in the weekend of Legacy, Brian Koval, which is very cool. So Brian's going to be joining us on Friday, probably with a Bant deck. We're going to work on a little bit of an idea and see how that goes. But uh, that should be a pretty, pretty cool way to open up the... Um, the weekend so a little bit of an insight there for you as supporters of the stream hope you guys enjoy that it'll be pretty cool all right let's really focus in for this last one it is actually nearly midnight but we have a pretty tough hand like a one lander even with exploration and loam i'm pretty happy to mulligan this like a fetch land off the top does change some things but i think that it just relies too much on the top uh this is probably better like we have turn one saga if we really want into turn two tomb we have turn one elvish reclaimer pretty happy to keep this and probably just bottom the wandering because the bolt's just a little bit cheaper you have, obviously you have access to it as well oh it's also a turn one um in that case i'm just gonna lead on the reclaimer okay uh it's not a tournament it'll just be uh seven different streams with uh those co-hosts and then playing decks that they're kind of well known for uh and taking them through a league bloodstained maya makes me definitely think this is gonna be uh hmm probably reanimator i 
Yeah, crop uh crop into ramp is pretty nice here as well. Swamp, double swamp. Okay. Hmm. Probably should have... Hmm. I could have used crop before this for flagstones and then flagstoned before voidwalker. What do I care about here? I don't really want to go for the combo just because of... Um... Sudden Edict, but I probably don't mind turning the Yav here into a Sajiri step. Especially if they're really trying to kill this. Pro Red. Uh, and then here... We're probably just holding up the Taiga as it's also Bolt, but then we can also just make a, a token as well. There's no point playing the Saga because we'll always just have one white left over, which doesn't do anything on this board, so happy to play Taiga. Could have fetched as well and played Taiga to play around like an opposition agent, but I think we're in an okay position. Against this sort of deck, getting these constructs is, is really nice. Okay, most likely holding up Opposition Agent, potentially. Hmm. In that case, I probably just want to float two and get rid of it. And then we also hold up Tega for Opposition Agent. What am I doing with the two mana in my main phase? Hmm. Oh, it just resolved. Okay. I think we're just getting out of the saga. Oh, of course, the two mana for saga. That makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. I don't mind Mox here. Needle's kind of nice, but not really needed. Not too sure what I'm what I what I want to needle. But Mox just allows me to build out my mana a little bit. Play the flagstones, as it's a great card to get rid of with the uh, crop rotation. Hey Mark, really cool to see you. Hope you're doing well. If you guys are looking for more Maverick content, definitely check out Strass Daddy in, in the comments. The number one Maverick streamer on Twitch. You heard it here first. I, th I think we're at a, a spot where I'm pretty happy to deal with the Voidwalker. It's a little bit annoying. But if I, if I don't have something for Opposition Agent, which I just feel like is in this deck, maybe we can just actually race against it. Could be like a grief which isn't too bad oh seasoned okay uh 
Uh, I don't want to do anything here. That's pretty nice. Yeah, thankfully, I think we'll be all good for Lage. Um, which is nice. Wow, they are they double block. Do I care? Probably not. I think I'm okay with this trade. Obviously a little bit scared of Helm, like if they're a Helm deck. I assume not. I'm going to assume that it's like a black red kind of value deck like i i could have cropped for bog there but i think cropping for the dlc okay um i think cropping for the the combo over two turns is probably better chrome mox so now they must be going for just little creatures which i still think is fine What? <laughs> okay, well we have to we have to kill this. Trample haste six one. When it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards two cards at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice it. Alright, I guess we'll see how they attack first. Probably obviously with both of these. Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, I'll put this in front and then just bolt it. Peep, peep, motherfuckers. <laughs> hmm. I kind of want to play the map, so I actually don't think I want to discard anything here I should have made yeah sorry I, I meant to make a, a, a thing there as well that's an easy uh an easy arrow don't want to sack the map either oh my gosh I just I just said I don't want to sorry I meant to click on the shadow spear and obviously target the uh the construct and attack apologies that's on me um honestly another saga seems pretty legit terrible uh, i believe this is just a, like a black red aggressive deck Basically, yeah, a modern scam. Having the crop also means we have access to Maze of Earth, which is quite nice. I don't believe that's been exiled. Oh, Hardcast Fury. Okay. Probably just 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, a lot, a lot of violence from that side. Interesting, they deal two damage to that. Am I missing something? 
Ah, uh, what are they doing here? Bolt. Um, we don't have anything to save that with. Nice. Okay. I don't want to use the crop just yet for maze because if we draw into one piece of the combo, being stage or depths, I do just want to grab the other half. But we're getting pretty close to needing it, especially with Fury on the board. Yeah, it's very true. Going for another saga is quite good as well. I think here we just want to make the saga and equip. Copying constructs is very strong. Opponent does still have this Season Pyromancer to get back, but I don't really care about two one ones when I have Shadow Spear on a big construct. Living Death. Each player exiles all creature cards from their graveyard, then sacrifices all creatures they control. Then put all cards they exile this way onto the battlefield. Okay, this is easily just me bajuka bogging them. <laughs> I guess I should have let oh, the trigger go first because if they get a creature back okay good but if they hit like a fury or something that would have been so good yeah should have waited for surveil 100% apologies team that's on me I think it's Needle and it's probably just naming Voidwalker, maybe? No, probably not. Black Red, Black Red. I guess Seasoned, potentially. Liliana, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of names we can go for there. Uh, we should just use this mana right now to equip as well. 
And then we actually have Letha with this bolt, so they have to draw life here. It has to be a good creature. What you got? What you got? Oh my gosh. Wait, they got a four? And then we just trample over. Oh, but it's got double strike. Doesn't matter. Oh no, I got bolt! What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? Come on, man. Don't slur all as well. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That is disrespectful to say the least. Ugh. I apologize. I apologize for that. Uh, this build is very cool. Uh, but I don't know what I want to bring in. Or take out. Opponent living the dream, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we're just running this back, honestly. I think we're just running this back, like... A uh, pretty sweet hand. A lot to do. Actually, yeah, endurance seems very good. Yeah. That's true. Endurance seems pretty good. Maybe Force of Vigor? Okay, maybe Force of Vigor. <laughs> hmm. They're down to zero cards? gonna go for I think Tega here it doesn't really matter actually maybe just Savannah Savannah of the swords next time we get to play Saga into Loam and then hold up Saga like if they have like a Planeswalker having the bolt is a little bit better Triome's pretty good as well I'm not gonna lie Hey Sport, thanks for the follow. Hope you're well. Hope you enjoy Legacy. Hope you enjoy Legacy as much as I do. Um, I will loam here, but I probably won't loam again. Just because it's really good with um, Fable down the line. I wonder if they're a Blood Moon deck. Lawrence, two steps ahead of me. Can't attack either, wow. Um, yeah, pretty happy to get a gear here that allows me to cast the Fable next turn. If I, I actually I won't because we just want to keep going up this uh, construct. Unless we draw like Ancient Tomb. Oh, there is a world where we can actually, we can actually get Saga into play here and I think I will. 
because we get to go and get Mox Opal. We get rid of the Ghost Quarter, and then we play Forest, and then we crop away the Forest, and we go and get Ancient Tomb, and then we use that mana to cast Fable. <laughs> uh, if that came across as an evil laugh, it, it most likely was. <laughs> Okay, uh, we do get the goblin token, thankfully. I mean, we actually have bolt for the Megus anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, that's all good. Um, yeah, we'll get rid of these two loams. Uh, oh, I can also dredge them. That's really interesting. Hey, Granham, thanks for the raid. Hope you're well. Um, you know what? I will loam one. <laughs> Oh, there's Dark Depths? Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. You know what's happening, right? You know what's happening. Depths comes in without any counter. I should have stacked everything there as well. But here we get to get a free 2020 thanks to removing the uh, Megas in the Moon and then getting a, a big old fatty. Very cool. Hey, Loma boy. Very cool to see you. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, this is sweet. One of the really cool interactions for me <laughs> between uh, Magus and Dark Depths. Damn, being able to fable away loam and then uh, dredge off the draw to then find Dark Depths. It's pretty nutty. Nice. Well, we finished 3-2, and that was a pretty sweet way to go about it. Uh, the list was really fun. Obviously, a lot of things to think about, but to to get close to... You know, a lot of the games were pretty close, which is nice. Um, I was really happy to see it. Um, it is quarter past 12, so I've got work in the morning. I'm going to go to bed, but a huge thank you to everyone who's coming tonight and watched and followed and subbed uh it's been awesome a huge thank you to panda as well for the list uh and for the support it's pretty hard to get up to a hundred thousand channel points i believe it is a hundred thousand channel points to be able to get a deck on stream um but a huge thank you for giving me a list that i really enjoyed i think everyone here really enjoyed uh i hope you enjoyed seeing it in action as well uh and yeah obviously very keen for the legacy weekend coming up on march 31st to april second which of course if you only just got in uh is this which is pretty much a seven stream weekend with different co-hosts uh all probably around like depths noble hierarch style decks but we'll see how that goes and yeah uh obviously again giving away the special guest before is brian Cobell, which is very cool so really really looking forward to that um in the meantime I'm going to send you guys, hopefully over to someone else who is still streaming. A big thank you to Granham as well for the bag. True Hero might be streaming some Legacy. Nice. So I'm going to send you guys over there. Very nice to see you, Loma Boy, for a quick second. I'll definitely be in touch to you um, about this. Very, very excited to have you back on. Uh, always love our co-streams. So... Very much looking to that. Looking forward to that. Yeah, all the best. Enjoy. I'm away for the full weekend, so I might see you guys on Sunday night. But until then, catch you next time.